What's up everybody, Renvale here, back for another Baldur's Gate 3 guide here, first thing in the morning. And today we are diving in how to use a controller in Baldur's Gate 3 on the PC, and what does that look like? In this case, I am using a wireless uh, Xbox Series X controller. You can use a wired controller, you can use generic controllers, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're just going to walk you through what it looks like on a controller today, because it plays beautifully on the controller, and I only wish more companies would do this because it seamlessly goes between the mouse and keyboard and controller and you can kind of just you know perf you know we'll get into it I'm, I'm getting really excited because the controller support is so good in this game that I I've actually I'm sitting here now wanting to play it on the controller and only on the controller and I'm probably gonna be doing like 85% of my live streams on the controller now and only doing mouse and keyboard for a handful of things which we're gonna talk about in today's video. If this is your first time to one of my how-to guides for Baldur's Gate 3, awesome. Welcome aboard. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. We do daily streams from 10 a.m. onwards. We do the big bad boss fights every day at 5 p.m. These are all central time. We do lots of other things, so check out the other playlists. Join the Discord. Links are down below. Without further ado, let me move Streamlabs over here, because I always put it over here when I'm wanting to make sure I face the camera properly. And I've already got the controller um, connected and everything, so we're just going to go in here now um, and say we've got a variety of options here um, to look at. Let me make sure I'm on the actual screen here. You do have to be tabbed into the window. <laughs> All right, it'll take a second here because it just went back to mouse and keyboard here. There we go. Now it's back to my controller. So, um, one of the first things that you'll note is that it is really easy to switch between the two, um, but you do have to be on the window itself. Um, so, you know, just make sure that you don't do what I just did, be tabbed out because I was tabbed out over at Streamlabs. So once you're on the screen, um, I don't know if this is different with a wired controller, but I'm doing via Bluetooth. And the way it works is, um, now that I have controller here, I have full access, I can do all sorts of stuff. I'm going up and down to the menu here, and we're going to show you some other stuff here. But all I have to do to use the mouse and keyboard is like come up here and just click my mouse. It'll take a moment, and now it's back to mouse and keyboard mode, right? Now it does take a slight moment, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click. I'll tell you when I click, and you'll notice there's a slight lag time before it switches over to the controller or vice versa and I'm not sure if that's because I'm using Bluetooth or if that's something that wired people also have so if you use a wired controller I'd love to hear from you in the comments below because this is my experience with a wireless Xbox Series X controller so I'm gonna hit the button right now and it's gonna take there it goes it took about a second you know it's like a second it's not an immediate thing but it's about one second it goes oh you just hit the controller here we go let's switch everything over now notice it does have a slightly different um, UI layout and different fonts and everything else. But I want to show you guys what this looks like. So we're going to go jump into a new game really quick. We're just going to go explore. Um, I'm just going to take one of the origin characters so that we can very quickly and, and easily get in without needing to go through character creation. Um, uh, the overall process is extremely seamless. To skip the cutscene, all you got to do is hit B. Now you're here. Like, I don't need to watch that cutscene. We've seen it. You know a hundred times uh, I don't want to reset tutorials and I don't want to do um, a custom one so I want to go ahead and do an origin character we've never seen I've never seen Asterion's intro so let's play this real quick and just get through his intro and then we'll uh, jump into the game show what the controls look like hello darling don't be shy I promise not to bite <laughs> until we've been formally introduced. Fair enough. My name's Astarian, and I've spent a century stalking the night, hunting for pretty morsels just like you. A man called Cazador made me what I am, kept me like a pet, forced me to do his bidding. No more. If I wanted to skip this, you just hit the, the B button and it skips the cutscene. And now I can finally pursue the one. You can do that with escape or spacebar in the game. These long, dark years. Revenge. Revenge. I'm going back to Baldur's Gate to track Casador down in his lair. I'll be the last thing the bastard ever sees. <laughs> That's a good laugh. 
But unfortunately, Asterion, your plans are going to be on hold here. <laughs> All right, so hit Y to review character um, because this is a, a pre-made character, so you don't have to do anything other than just to review it. Um, you can um, rename them um, at some point, I think. Um, but in this case, it says next, uh, choose Guardian. You need Guardian. I'm just going to say venture forth because at this point, uh, hold Y to venture forth. We just want to get into the game so I can show you guys what the controls look like. I'm going to skip this cutscene. We've seen it a million times. We've seen it on the live stream. We don't need to watch it again. Load times are so much better in live, everybody. It's, it's, it's really nice. Skipping this cutscene. Now this one I have to hit A to skip because it's just him jumping out of the pod. All right, so here we have Asterion. What's happening? Where am I? Where am I? All right, so the first part I love about the controller is how amazing it feels to move around. So first and foremost, escape, um, you just, you move like so with your left thumb pad and it's just absolutely amazing the way it, there's no, one of the things I've always been frustrated with and I've talked about this in my uh, previous video on camera controls in, um, in Baldur's Gate 3, I complained about the wonkiness of Larian's cameras. I didn't like them much in, in, Divinity Original Sin 1 or Divinity Original Sin 2, and they brought it over here, but I have a video on that. Um, so I was really happy to see the controller because I take all my previous criticisms back, all of them. I take them all back right now because, guys, you did controller support right here. So movement is the number one thing I love about the controller here. So left is to move around like this, right? So I can go in any direction I hold the left thumb pad in. Um, or when I want to pan the camera, I can do left or right with the right thumb pad. So as I'm moving around, I can literally be moving the camera as I go, just like so, and I can pan these shots however I want them. I can even go in the opposite direction if I want to, if I want to get like a drone shot, you know? Um, so on and so forth. So just really great controls. But there's there's more to it, everybody. When you're controlling the camera as you're moving, so you can hold back on the right thumb pad and it pans the camera up and brings it into that overhead mode, the tactical view. Or you can push it forward and it seamlessly moves down and behind the character for an over-the-shoulder view. What? Like, dude, the ca it's such a smooth transition. Let's let's watch this if I if I do it in in segments. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull down on the controller here, and it's gonna pan out a little bit. Do it again, pans out a little bit more. Do it again, pans out a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh oh oh, we're hitting the ceiling right here. So if I pan around here, oh there it goes. I had to get to the ceiling where the camera could go up, and now I'm in tactical mode. And then just to bring it back down, you know, we just tap 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 it's brilliant camera work um so i like it somewhere right around here i mean this is a pretty good pov for me and the angles are great because i can see out plenty far ahead um i mean you can even if you really wanted to like i'm not a big over the shoulder guy unless i have to for games like god of war or something but this if you could lock the camera to your character i mean i think some people might even enjoy that but i like it somewhere out around Right around here, like two or three clicks out, feels really good to me. Now, once you approach items, it's really easy. You just hit the A button, and you interact, and you have a take all button. All these options in the bottom here. It's so well done, guys. I'm going to take all. You got what you deserve. Just wait. Wait till we get to combat, guys. I was genuinely surprised how damn good controller support is in this game. Um, really well done. So let's go up here and just show this, uh, what this would look like, because there's a conversation up here. So we can show what the dice rolls look like with this section, and how you do dice rolling and everything else, and, and all the things that you need to do. So here's this creature. We're going to interact with it. I'm going to skip this cutscene. We've seen it a bunch. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. If you want to watch the full cutscenes, everybody, I do streams daily. <laughs> we watch the full cutscenes in streams. Quivers in expectation. Please. Oops. Before they return. They return. All right. Who am I talking to? Man or a brain? And you just go through the options right here. Click select. Born. Born new from this husk. You 
realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. All right. Uh, you sound afraid. Why? So just is, it's the same, but it's just I'm ogling at this. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body, from this case. Free us. So here's what I wanted to show you. Um, this is the next section. Now, traditionally, you know, in the PC version, you could hover your mouse over each one of these to get the stats. Uh, if you look down here, uh, I'm pointing in the wrong direction. Down here over the bottom right, which says tool tips, just click the uh, the right button. And now you've got tool tips. As you scroll down, it'll show you what your bonuses are um, from these rolls. Now, I get a plus three bonus from dex. So we're definitely going to go with the dex option. Here's what the dice rolls look like. You hit Y to roll the dice. Dex is going to be automatically applied. I failed, unfortunately. Sucks to be me. All right, we're going to skip the cutscenes. It won't budge. Let's just destroy it. All right, let's loot it. Nothing there. All right, let's turn around and get out of here. We're going to go down here. Now, prepare yourselves, everybody, because this is one of the coolest introductions in video game history, right here. And I am gonna, I am gonna show this, because this is this is worthy of being seen multiple times. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Oh, it's so good. So good. Abomination. This is your end. She's frustrated. I get it. And your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Cool. What is this? Yeah, I'm skipping real quick. What's up, everybody? Quick commercial break here to give a shout out to our guild champions, who are the highest tier memberships here on YouTube. Ancient Entity, Assassin Gamer 94, Bubblonia Rising, Crazy's Relative, Mujin, and Remy D. Thanks so much for the highest tier membership. And thanks to all of the members who support the channel, because you keep me doing this full time. You too can become a supporter if you're new here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Join as a member. There's three different tiers. We do lots of special stuff, private polls, private videos. You get a shout out if you're the highest tier membership, but you can also do one-off uh, donations in the form of super chats on any live stream or premiere you see. And of course, super thanks on any upload or YouTube short, whatever you can contribute. It's great. Keeps me on the air full time. Keeps the cats fed, keeps the homestead running. Anyway, back to the video, everybody. All right. So we got to deal with some imps, everybody. Our first combat encounter. And this is where I think the controller... Um, this is the one area where I might prefer to use mouse and keyboard. Uh, but I do want to show you what it looks like with the controller. Before we do, though, remember that if you wanted to switch to mouse and keyboard here, like I might want to, the easiest thing to do is just right-click your mouse, and boom, you're back in mouse and keyboard mode. And now I can go back to the things I might be accustomed to after three years of early access of, you know, doing everything I would do with this. But let's say I want to go back to the controller, I would just hit, you know, like, the thumb pad or something. Um, and we'll be back here um, into this mode, right? So to do this, one of the first things you do is if you hover over, um, it says main hand attack. So it's always, if you're a melee character, this is going to be the easiest thing to do in the world because you're just going to run up and hit things. But if you want to access your abilities, it, um, I think it's the right bumper here. Yes. So the right bumper will open up. It might even, the left bumper might also. Yeah, it's either one of the bumpers, the, the top ones, the RB and LB. Not the RTLT, but the LB, R, RB. Um, you can open up your, your windows here, and there's multiple windows, so you just hit RB or LB to cycle between them. And so, like, your first one's going to be the combat actions that you have, any spells you might have. Second one might be the same. We'll, we'll see um, Lazale here in a minute as well. And then, of course, any potions and things you might have. And as you get higher in levels, I think you get more of these. Um, I'm not entirely sure on that, but I'm, I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll experiment more as we get deeper into the gameplay here. But let's say I don't want to do my melee attack and I actually want to do sneak attack. Um, 
Now, I'm not going to be able to do sneak attack because I don't have advantage on the mob right now. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, wanted to choose it. And it tells me must have on, so okay, I can't do that. So back into this, let's say I want to... Let's say I want to cast a Firebolt. I would choose that um, and use Firebolt. Boom. Dead mob. And then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and use my movement to get over here. And then I have a bonus action, right? If I had a bonus action, I could go in here and say hide. But I don't have any actions. I just have the bonus actions, which would be something like dipping, shoving, or, you know taking a potion of healing as an example so I'm done with my turn we're gonna hit Y it's gonna move to Lizelle now she's easy she's a melee character boom just like so and then go ahead and have her move up a little bit more right and then end her turn now it's their turn missed and now I could choose let's just do a regular old melee attack since I don't need to do anything special boom it's that simple Combat is that simple. Now, to the helm. Really good stuff here. Um, so from here, you know, you can run around and talk Not to people now. if you want to. We must go to the helm. She doesn't want to talk right now. All right, leave. I can uh, go over here and like loot bodies if I wanted to, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so really, really, really seamless so far. Now, I also have another character in my party here, and you'll notice on the left it says hit LT. If I hit LT, it brings up this window, which allows me to then do the things like splitting party, um, like so, so that they're no longer in a group. I'll come back here, here, and here, and regrouping them like so, um, and then maybe selecting him. Or if I wanted to select her, I would select her. Now I'm controlling the Zale, like so. Um, going back to Sterian. It's all very, very, very seamless. Um, and then, of course, you can just go into your action bars from here and get into, you know, some of these, you know, toggling non-lethal attacks and all the things you can do from here. And then to open up the menu, at least on the Xbox series, it's literally the same button you would use to open up the, the, the menu on your Xbox. You just hit it and boom, now we're at the menu and I can go in here and I can do all the things that I might want to do and change settings. I can check the controller things. I can set my video stats. I can set my audio stats. I can change. And all this looks completely different if I right click on the mouse you're gonna notice a change here see the difference between the two so it's really cool how that even has a its own UI um, that is different than the controller UI so then if I want to go back to controller I just hit a button boom I'm back in the controller menu I just feel like this is one of the most seamless transitions I've ever seen um, with uh, uh, between mouse and controller it's not instantaneous like for say I, I remember when I played um, but I was playing wired on that one before my cats chewed up my wired cable guys that's why I'm on wireless right now my original Xbox 360 controller I'd been using for years and Lucas he did it on a live stream those of you who are here remember this Lucas chewed up I was so focused on the live stream I didn't realize Lucas was down here being a grumpy cat and he chewed through the cable of the Xbox 360 controller while we were live and then we, my USB, you know, like the ding that you get when a USB something is being connected or disconnected started going on and off. And I'm like, what is going on? And I looked down and Lucas is like. <laughs> so anyway, um, Everspace 2 is immediate transition. So maybe it's that way with the wired controller here. But all I know is it still feels great to me, um, even though there is a slight transition switch over. But it's doing more than just switching the controller, you know, because it's switching the whole UI when it does it. So for my money, um let me pull the window back over here, everybody, so that we can be facing the camera the way I need to. Otherwise, I forget. Um, for my money, everybody, the controller is the way to go. Um, but also, I still am going to be doing some mouse and keyboard from time to time. Because there are some pretty complex things that have to happen during some of the bigger boss fights in combat. And I feel like maybe it's because I'm used to the mouse and keyboard. Um that's going to be the natural go-to for me is going to be mouse and keyboard for the more complex things but as I get more and more used to the controller I may end up playing this entirely on the controller and of course I'm still waiting for maybe hopefully the eventuality that it comes to the Xbox Series X but for those of you who are waiting for the PlayStation 5 version let me tell you the controller feels amazing and I don't know what they've done with like the haptic controls and everything for the PS5 port but I guarantee you guys with all the love and attention that I have seen from the controller so far just on the PC version you guys are in for a treat when this comes out on the PlayStation here soon so just 
I promise you it's worth the wait. I promise you it's worth the wait. Um, let me put the control over there, and I'm going to say to everybody, thanks so much for your attention today. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed my guide. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. We're daily live at 11 a.m. Central as often as we can. Uh, join the Discord. Links are down below. Or support if you can with memberships or super chats. See you next time, everybody. Happy gaming.